tuning in today to Front Porch Conversations here at Advent Christian Village. We're on the porch at the Copeland Community Center and you'll hear a few nature noises and we'll just enjoy those. I'd now like to introduce you to our guest today, Helen Whitfield. Good morning, Helen. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. And you? Never been better. Well, it's a great morning here. Oh, it's beautiful. All the mornings are beautiful here. And I bet you like to get up early and see him off on the day, the start of the day. You know, I'm not really an early morning riser per se, but I do love, we walk early and I love to watch the sun, the, the peaking of the skies and clouds as I walk in the morning when the sun starts doing that. I said, there's no greater time really that I, I like to walk than at sunrise. So yeah. <laughs> and do you um, do a lot of walking here at the village, I know. Yes, uh, me and my friend Dottie, you know Dottie Cook, you mm -hmm. interviewed her one time. Uh, we get up and do, in the summertime when it gets so hot in the afternoon, we do two walks in the morning. We try to get in at least two miles every day. Mm -hmm. uh, as it gets cooler, we will walk more because we'll be able to walk in the afternoons too. So, yes, love to do it. And that's a wonderful thing for your health yes. and your well-being as well. Yes, Just yes. the doctor well said it's good to get plenty of exercise. So. And good, nice fresh air. And Oh, I love the fresh <laughs> air, yes. Helen, tell our viewers where you were born and where you grew up. Okay, I was uh, born on a farm in a little farming community in Grayson County, Kentucky. Not a big county, and most of it is farming. Mm -hmm. um, I was born and raised there. I spent my whole, I mean, I spent my first, all the way through 12 years of school uh, in Grayson County. And of course, uh, I would come home weekends and, you know, then I moved uh, to another place. There wasn't a lot, at that time, there wasn't a lot of uh, job opportunities there in Litchfield, so I just moved to a bigger town, a city. What was the best part of growing up in that environment? Well, I'm from a large family. How large? Well, there were 12 siblings, but I only knew 11. One of them died before I ever came along. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was 11 of us that, you know, growing up on a farm with that many siblings, of course, you have to work hard together, but you can play hard together, too. And we, we did that a lot. So, yes, it was beautiful down there. I loved I called it God's country. <laughs> <laughs> and what was your what are some of your fondest childhood memories? Well, we loved I loved to play uh, softball. Uh, that I started playing softball when I was probably about five years old, could lift a bat. You know, uh, I loved that. I loved singing. Our, my whole family is musical. Um, I loved taking long walks, uh, playing, going down to the schoolyard and playing basketball or volleyball or softball. I guess just being with my family at that time was probably my fondest memories. And I'd have to say, just being with my family. And do you have, uh, where do your siblings live now? Do you have any close by? Or? Uh, every one of them now, thank God, are on this side of the country. Uh, the one farthest away right now is in Ohio, which isn't that far from Kentucky. Now, my youngest sister spends part of the summer months in Ure, Colorado, where she has an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the time she spends in Litchfield, in our hometown. And uh, she, loves, she loves it out there. Her second husband, she buried her first husband. Her second husband died last fall. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to keep it going 
I guess in honor of him, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, she she still the next year she says she's going to maybe go almost all the way to Christmas before she comes back to Litchfield. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she really likes it. Well, you said after high school you moved to a larger town. Well, yes, well, uh, I moved to Louisville. I guess most people know where Louisville, mm -hmm. Kentucky is. I moved there and I, I got a job at a uh, mail order manufacturing house for dry cleaning goods. Uh, I did a lot of foreign orders over the phone and uh, and typed up cards and stuff for the, and you know, just actually took down orders, a lot from foreign, foreign, foreign correspondents, uh -huh. I guess you'd call them. Uh, it was interesting, it was interesting. How long did you work there? Six years. And we had sort of a falling out because I was doing an awful lot of work and they wanted to give me a big long title, but they didn't want to give me more money. And I was doing an awful lot of work. I was doing a lot of my supervisor's work too. So I asked for a raise and they said they couldn't do it. So I said, well, that's fine. I'm going to get my notice, but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be working here till my notice runs out, but I, uh, I will be looking for another job. Uh, so that's what I did. After that, I went to a place in Louisville called Logan Company. It was a ornamental iron, conveyor belt company on Logan Street. And I was in advertising there. I love that. I, mm -hmm. I, I ran an A.B. Dick Offset Press mm -hmm. and uh, uh, did the address of graph and the uh, typograph and made all these brochures to mail out and you know went them through the postage. And I really liked that job. I worked about two years and then <clears throat> my brother, my youngest brother, became ill so I went back home and we found out that he had uh, melanoma so I went down there and I got a job at Kane Industries in Litchfield which is a sewing factory but Charlie died in uh, 1975 it was about a year from the time of his diagnosis so that was a very hard time for me because I was very close to Charlie and uh, I just kept working for a while there uh, Charlie was, can I say something about Charlie? Certainly. He was only 24. We don't know when he started. It was somewhere in the uh, late elementary school years. He started being a little compulsive, obsessive, obsessive compulsive, mm -hmm. and not very communicative. But then he had a brilliant mind. I mean, pr brilliant. Even the teacher said, we can't teach him anything. He knows it already which I don't know if that was good or bad. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, he ran away at the end of his eighth grade all the way to Massachusetts to become a monastery priest. And it didn't work out because he wouldn't communicate. All of his papers were A's, you know, but he wouldn't communicate. Mm -hmm. So they, they sent him home. And uh, he went there and he went to high school and he had a hard time because there's bullies mm -hmm. in high school. and. Um, once dad put him into that uh, home in, in uh, Louisville, outside of Louisville, which nobody liked. And dad said he would never commit him again if he mm -hmm. ever, because he just couldn't stand it. But like I said, he died in 1975, right before we moved into the new house that dad built. We lived in the little old farmhouse, all of us. And then he built a home down where his grandfather and his uh, sister lived. He tore that house down and uh, and had them build a like a duplex, full basement all the way across. Mm -hmm. That was nice. But Charlie died in November, right before they completed it in December. So, anyway, uh, I stayed at that job until they laid off. You know, sewing work, factory work, sometimes comes to a standstill if you don't get enough orders done. They were we were doing mainly Levi Strauss mm -hmm. jeans and, and pants like that there. And uh, so a bunch of us got laid off. I had a brother-in-law who was a transmission specialist and owned his own shop in Louisville. So he asked me if I would come and run his shop for him because, you know, the office, mm -hmm. because the lady that he had was robbing him lied. Because oh, <laughs> he dealt a lot with cash as well as checks and stuff. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll go up and work. So I, I moved up there and uh, worked there. Just three, three years, and then he drowned at a, at a lake. Uh, and his uh, my niece 
inherited everything. She kept it. She let, she let it go on running for a little bit. Then eventually she said, uh, "Let's just pack it down and, and sell it." Uh, so that's what we did. Uh, and after that, I moved back home for a while. I didn't get a job right away. The foreman of Pete's Transmission wanted to maybe open his own shop, and he asked me if I would run it for him if if he did. So I didn't even. I just applied for unemployment because I didn't want to go to mom and dad's uh, making some kind of money. Uh, and but I waited oh three or four months, and then I didn't. I figured he wasn't going to do it. So then I just went ahead and got a job in Ordsboro, Kentucky. Uh, and that's where a lot of things started happening. <laughs> Tell us about this. Well, I, you know, I played softball. Uh -huh. I started playing softball. When I, was young. Uh, I joined a uh, gospel group, a gospel rock-like group. <laughs> in Orangeburg. There were so many of us, though. We did concerts, and we ended up making one uh, tape that we went to Louisville to make a tape of, of it. I still got the the tape on the CD there at home. Um, they wanted us to tour. Well, we had so many diverse people with different jobs and stuff, and you can't just leave those things on the off the chance that you might succeed in this mm -hmm. business. So we had to turn that down, and we hated it. It eventually disbanded, uh, but that was one of the high points of my life. I loved that. Um, I did several different jobs. It was in Owensboro that I started uh, working in healthcare, um, uh, home health aid, uh, school health aid. Uh, I had the health department, uh, just different things like that. Uh, resident assistance and like uh, uh, assisted living. <laughs> and and uh, I worked there for several years. And then I moved to Illinois for a couple years and I got a job at another health care. I was the head CNA there. And uh, it was called the Norton of Joliet. <laughs> <laughs> so I worked there for a couple of years and I, I got tired of, you know, I just, for some reason I was not really happy there. So I talked to my sister, my older sister who lived in Arizona. And she said, well, come on down here, Helen, you can live in my mobile. Oh, we're so I went and that's where I met Dottie mm -hmm. and uh, we got along famously we had so much in common uh, I got on the senior softball team that she was on we did a lot of music together uh, took a lot of walks hiked we loved to hike in the Catalina Mountains uh, we hiked a lot and when my sister my sister's family wanted her to move back over there where it wasn't so far mm -hmm. and rather than put a lot of money into the mobile home they finally convinced her to go so at that time so i didn't really have a place to stay so dottie said stay with me and that's when i called here she told me about a advent christian village and i called and talked to karen and uh and i was able to uh with the help of uh, hud able to uh come and live here so i stayed at, at, at Dottie's mobile home. Luckily, there were two bedrooms and two baths. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, we two women in a in a mobile home. You have to be real careful. <laughs> uh, so uh, we finally got the call and, and we moved down here. And I moved down. She had seen it before because she had friends that were already living here. Mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as I saw it, this is no lie. I said, I can live here. All this openness. If I can go out here and walk in all this nature and stuff, I'm happy. Uh, so I was really glad uh, to move here and I became an ambassador. I was helping Karen and Pam uh, do tours. Mm -hmm. Really like that. I'm usually not a talker, but if you get me started, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you can't get me to shut up. <laughs> well, that's great. I'm enjoying your conversation today uh, like I have on other occasions. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty much my story. I, I most of my years, I had did a lot of different jobs, and I and I liked them. Uh, but the, you know, the the last uh, most of it was in healthcare in, in Louisville, uh, um, Owensboro, and um, Illinois. Now, when I got to Arizona, I had already retired early because of uh, lifting on patients and dragging beds and stuff gets to you. And I was, my, you know, uh, my rotator cuff. Mm -hmm. I eventually tore it completely while I was working there. And, 
they got they paid to have it work workman's comp paid to get it uh, fixed uh and so i moved uh moved down here and i said well you know I, i'd like to get some kind of job i don't want to just live in roost mobile without paying my way mm -hmm. in some way you know so i got a job first at a place called sierra madre it was like a assistant living but it was very hard and they didn't offer insurance and at that time i needed insurance mm -hmm. So uh, I got a part-time job at Walmart, and uh, I worked there for several years. And then in 2015, uh, early 2015, early 2015, I developed breast cancer. Um, so I kept working for a while, and I had to do uh, radiation and stuff. And they were real good about it. They let me go anytime I needed to go. And uh, in August of that year, I said, you know what, I'm through, I'm retiring completely because I want to be able to do fun things while I'm still able to do fun things. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad I did. I, I retired in August of that year. And then in 2016, I was having these episodes of thinking I was going to faint. I'd be sitting there doing nothing. All of a sudden I'd go like that, you know, I said, oh, what is the matter? You know, a couple of times I had to go to the emergency room at night. Mm -hmm because uh, I couldn't handle it. It was really scary. And finally, a cardiologist saw these things and ran a test and said, <laughs> he said, Helen, you see this uh, graph here? You see this line? Your heart stopped beating for four and a half seconds. And he said, that's not going to kill you. But another second or two, you might have fainted and killed yourself by hitting your head on something. So he said, uh, he looked into it and says, I think a pacemaker will take care of it. Your heart looks great. It's just that the, the electrical part is not working. So he put a pacemaker in it. Boy, all of a sudden I had all kinds of energy. <laughs> I'd get up on the mountains walking and hiking there. And, and my younger friend, well, Dottie was with me. She couldn't keep up with me. And my younger friend had a hard time keeping up. <laughs> but I said, hey, this is just like having a whole new body here. <laughs> <laughs> you went into overdrive, huh? <laughs> yes, I went. They, they said they were going to get one, too, so they could keep up with me. But... Uh, Anyway, that uh, that that came out all right, and um, it's doing real well. Uh, I have plenty of battery left. I went to the cardiologist the other day, and she says, "Helen, you got all kinds of time left on you. You're not using that much. Your heart is uh, the pacemaker is not having to work that hard. So that's good." Uh, and what year did you and Dottie move here? It was uh, 2011. Dottie was already in. Oh, oh, here. Um, yes. Uh, August of 2017. Right before Irma. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I, I remember Irma. That was also when I, uh, I was already having trouble with my knee, and I slipped on, you know, that little up there by Clark, that little, uh, by the river? Oh, yes. Uh, the little bridge, the wooden bridge. I must have found the only place that had wet leaves because my foot went out from under me, and I went down and I twisted this and uh, I went to the emergency room, and uh, they wanted to do an MRI. And I said, you can't do that. I got a pacemaker. So they did an uh, x-ray, stuff like that. They said, it looks pretty bad. And I said, well, I, I was going to do stuff. So I said, can't you put a shot in it or something to give me some time? And uh, so he did. But it got to where it was hurting real bad. So I, I, I went ahead and had it, uh, what do you call it? Replaced? Knee replacement, replacement, yes. Which I hated that I can't stand not to be able to walk. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, so I rushed along, you know, and it's fine. Now I can walk just as fast as I ever did, and I'm fine with it. That's wonderful. Well, you live in Dowling House. I don't yes. think we mentioned that. And I remember a number of times that you and Dottie uh, would play for different birthday parties. Oh, yeah, or we, different, love, I, we love to play. She, she's she's a great pianist, and I love to sing, always have. And she sing some backup for me you know and yeah we like that music is a good therapy for everybody uh, whether you're yes. the listening or singing or and they keep okay. asking us we try to do some over there we've done it two or three times we made them sit in here while we went to the piano over there because you, know, you can't sing with a mask on uh -huh, but, right uh, so we've been doing it uh one time we even did it on good friday uh, we opened our doors on the third floor and they opened their doors and set their chairs outside and we did a bunch of like were you there and, and a bunch of Easter uh, Good Friday music they really like that 
earlier when we were um, talking, you talked about you grew up in the Roman Catholic Church. Did you at some point change? I never changed my denomination uh-huh. name title, okay? But uh, I have uh, gone to different churches, and uh, in Arizona, I tried the Catholic Church, and then I went to Dottie's Baptist Church, and I've loved the music. That's a must be for me. Uh-huh. If, if the music's not good, I can't hardly <laughs> worship because that's how I worship. Uh, so we really like that, and, and and we like the church here, and we like the choir and all this stuff. So, uh, but I won't change my denomination. I mean, and I, I'm one of those people who believe it's not the name you call yourself that that indicates worship and religion. It's what's in your heart that matters. That's that's uh, the way I see it yeah, too. Yeah. So uh, that never bothers me about that. Do you have a particular time in your life that you really felt the Lord's presence? Or a call to you? Yes, uh, Dottie was there uh, for some. See, I had a lot of trouble during the years, uh, my adult years, with a lot of problems and stuff. And I don't know, I railed against God so much, and then then practically lost my religion. But Dottie made me see something in myself that I had forgot was there, and that was my faith. When I was going to the Catholic Church in Owensboro, I was a music minister. Me and my friend, we did three or four masses every weekend, just saying, okay? Uh, But even then, it wasn't good enough. Things happened that just made me doubt a lot. So Dottie was talking to me, she's very good at this. I guess, you know, know, she Mm -hmm. was a missionary. And uh, I gave my my life and heart to God. One day at their table, I was just crying. I don't cry that easily. (laughs) But uh, so I'll always be grateful to her and God for that. You talked a little bit about baseball. Tell us what you love know. softball. I love to play softball. I played all my life uh, in the, in Louisville. We were on a church team, and we won every game during the season and postseason. We never lost a game that year. And then I went on to play uh, on an independent team, and we did real well on that. And uh, they asked me to play Triple A. But that's when I was leaving to go back to Litchfield, so I had to turn that down. But it was still an honor to be asked. Uh, I what position it. have you played? Uh, I can play any position except pitcher. I can't pitch underhanded. I throw the ball. <laughs> uh, but I, mainly I played uh, second base, uh, shortstop sometimes. And I love outfield. I love to catch balls right in front of me, you know, mm-hmm. what they call shoestring catches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I love softball. I love volleyball. Uh, Horseshoes. We used to have uh, co-ed teams uh, for horseshoes, mm-hmm. and my partner and I, we won so many of those tournaments. Uh, now I don't even know if I can throw a horseshoe, but... <laughs> you sound like kind of a triple threat there with all your different sports. I love sports, yes. Uh, I love sports. I love playing it, and, and uh, Donnie and I have gone to a lot of uh, softball tournaments. Uh, we went to Palm Springs one time for a, a tournament. Uh, University of Kentucky, which is my mm-hmm. place, and Don, in Arizona we're playing, and so we went to uh, Palm Springs to watch that, that tournament. Kentucky won. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't let her forget, huh? No, I wore my blue Kentucky shirt, she wore a red Arizona shirt, we sat side by side and cheered for two different teams. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was commenting on your lovely purple tennis shoes that you have on when, you, when I came in. Yes. And you said you have quite a collection of tennis I shoes. I have a lot of tennis shoes. <laughs> Dottie says I have too many tennis shoes. She, But I like to sort of match my shoes with something like, see the purple uh-huh. shirt and the purple. I like to sort of match sometimes and with all these shoes. And I'm going to get some more. I'm going to get some gray ones and some tan ones. <laughs> well, you're making a fashion statement today. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to see those. And the purple earrings. <laughs> yeah, you've got it covered. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love tennis shoes. Um, Tell us what advice you'd give a young person today. A young person in life in general. Mm-hmm. First of all, don't ever doubt yourself. Uh, it can only if you start doubting yourself, it's only going to drag you down more. You have to believe. People who don't believe in God, I don't understand because how can you look at everything and not know that there's a God? Uh, just believe in yourself, and if you can believe in in uh, in God. Because if you believe in God, you're going to believe in yourself. Because it's all on the same page there. Um, work hard. 
don't take things for granted. Don't take anything for granted. Work hard and always be confident in God and yourself. That's all I can say for any child. Um, yeah. Wonderful advice. Well, it's something I'm trying to live by. <laughs> well, all of us are children of God, so right. whatever our exactly. ages. Exactly, right. So, yeah. What have you and um, how have you spent your time during the quarantine period? Uh, being upset that I can't go. <laughs> Dottie and I love to take trips. And we also take people to uh, medical appointments and stuff. And we had a whole bunch of that uh, starting last December mm -hmm. all the way up through the middle of March. And after that was over, we were going to go on a nice long trip. The pandemic hits and we're still holding my money and stuff. to <laughs> wait to be able to go. <laughs> We're hoping maybe next year we'll be able to. I think that's the hope of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard. Uh, on Sundays, just to get out, uh, we'll go somewhere. We won't go in restaurants yet to eat, but we'll go to uh, a pickup window and get something and go somewhere to eat, uh, to eat it. Usually maybe at a lake or something mm -hmm. to watch. And then we'll drive around. And we, we love to explore, so we go to different places to do that. So we're trying to keep busy. And then, you know, we, we just keep busy. I read a lot. We both read a lot. Uh, and I have a Kindle that I play games mm -hmm. on sometimes. And, and do, you, do you follow baseball, professional baseball? Uh, I'm a Cincinnati Reds fan. They don't do so well now. <laughs> but if they're on, I will try to watch them unless they start being beaten real bad. I'm, I'm a very poor fan of that. <laughs> Whereas you, you okay basketball, men's basketball, they're usually pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it's not a bit hard to watch that. Yeah. Would you like to end by singing our viewers a little something? Then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Thank you so much, Helen. Not only have we had a conversation, but a concert. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's hard for me to do. I'm blushing. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in today, and we hope you'll tune in for another Front Porch Conversation.